Story 1. North Africa. Men sitting outside, drinking tea, chatting, doing nothing. Women doing housework, getting food, picking up kids from school, carrying all the weight. Story 2. Savo National Park Guest Lodge Pool Sign. No swimming after sunset. Silly me asked why. The cats drink there. At 9 p.m., we looked from the safety of the lodge. The cats were lions and leopards. Story 3. Longyearbyen in Spitsbergen. It is forbidden to leave the city without a rifle and authorization because of polar bears. Signs reading Beware of Polar Bear are everywhere. No guns inside the market, with a pile of shotguns lying around next to the entrance. The school is like a prison, with iron grids and barbed wire to protect the children from the bears. It's forbidden to lock your car or house so that anyone can take refuge in case of a polar bear attack. Did I mention polar bears? Story 4. People take putting trash in the right bins pretty seriously in Germany. I once saw my landlord picking through my trash and sorting it shortly after moving in, and I got a stern lecture afterward. I saw him checking a few other times, but I did my best to do it right after that. Similarly, in Switzerland, people seem to watch the trash bins like hawks for anyone using the non-tax bags. I always use the right ones, but I saw someone else use a normal black trash bag at around 10 p.m., and someone started shouting at him from one of the apartments above. I was also pretty surprised how different and more laid-back restaurants are, especially in Switzerland. In the United States, once you're done eating, or even before you are, they're giving you the check so they can turn more tables as soon as possible. The first time I went out to eat, I sat there with my friend for about 45 minutes before we caught on that maybe we had to ask for the bill. Story 5. In Japan, the politeness was a huge culture shock. Bowing instead of shaking hands and handling money with both hands flipped my etiquette expectations upside down. Story 6. When I was a young teen, my family and two other families we were friends with went on vacation to the United States, to Florida. We're from Germany. My English was as good as can be expected from a 12 or 13 year old, but surprisingly I was still the most competent in our travel group. Probably because the adults hadn't had any lessons for decades. I was not prepared for the amount of small talk. Random people chatting with you, the cashier at the supermarket, employees in stores greeting you, asking if they can be of any help. I was already shy, not confident in my language skills, and used to a culture where people generally leave you to your business, and where it's normal for teens to explore on their own. At that age, I was allowed to take any public transport I had a valid ticket for and just go out and spend my time where I wanted to, at least as long as I told my parents where I intended to go, although that wasn't always easy to predict. Once or twice, I ended up in some unfamiliar place in the evening, stuck there because I missed the last bus and then had to call my parents from a payphone to come and pick me up. Let's just say there weren't many opportunities to explore Florida on my own. I kind of felt like a much younger kid again, always glued to my parents. Plus, the sheer amount of choice in the supermarkets. How do you guys even get your shopping done in a reasonable amount of time? The time it took us just to check out all the different types of ice cream flavors is probably equal to how long our average weekend shopping trip took back home. If I lived in the United States, I'd be shuffling through aisles upon aisles of cereal, starving because I can't make up my mind what to buy. Story 7 I stayed in a small village in Romania. They have unsegregated bathrooms without stall doors, and the toilets were basically holes in the ground you had to squat over. The streets were cobblestone, and their main transportation was horse-drawn wagons. It was like stepping into the 1800s, and it was 2006. Story 8 China is an obvious one to pick out, but some of the culture shocks were intense as a British person. Particularly noticeable in the poorer areas, the big cities, as in all countries, are pristine and presentable. Someone just letting their child relieve themselves in the subway next to a bin and many urinating on the street in the middle of the day. Spitting like big, hawking gobs on the street everywhere. A woman spat on the bus next to me. I really hated this. People with disfigurements begging. There was a man with a literal white bone sticking out of his stump begging at the side of a busy area. China doesn't care about poor people's health. A dwarf entertaining on the street and people pointing and laughing in a mocking way. It was like a freak show, and I was very uncomfortable. 
being stared at and having photos taken due to being blonde and white. People from the countryside who were visiting the city for the first time in their lives were amazed seeing different cultures. One boy literally stopped me and asked in broken English for a photo with me. He said he was practicing his English. His parents looked on from a distance with their thumbs up, and it was really adorable. Others would just stop and stare at me in the middle of the street, which was pretty embarrassing. Poor farmer women in the fields, literally folded in half with a huge bend in their back from bending over their entire lives. The angle was astonishing. I could go on. I love China. It's now a lot harder to travel there. So I'm glad I did when I got the chance. There are also a lot of amazing areas and loads of lovely people. Like anywhere, there are less desirable parts and better parts. I hated how they treat poor people. The tourist parts are carefully cleaned and often have guards watching your behavior, which was weird. The countryside was beautiful in parts. A lot of tourist areas were so utterly crowded with people that I didn't enjoy them much. Story 9. Visiting family in Australia. I'm from the United Kingdom. The first day we landed, my uncle had a little do-it-yourself job for someone, so I tagged along. We got to the job, and my uncle handed me his car keys and said, I'm going to be here for at least an hour. Take the car and have a drive around the city for a while. Another time, I was driving down the Stuart Highway, and there were dead kangaroos everywhere. Apparently, they walk out in front of the 18-wheelers at night and get hit. My uncle casually said, if one of them walks out in front of the car, your natural reaction is to swerve. Don't do that because you'll flip the one-ton caravan behind us, and that will flip the car. Just hit the throttle and hope it doesn't come through the windshield at you. Also, when driving in the outback, he thought nothing of driving with a can of beer casually sitting in the cup holder. Everything about Australians is just so carefree about anything whatsoever, but so chilled at the same time. Story 10 that despite how friendly the Irish are, they are actually impossible to make friends with. Ireland has a very closed, family-centric culture. They make their friends at school and stick with them for life, very rarely letting new people into their circles. You will never be short of a friendly someone to talk to while sitting at the bus stop, but forget about living here as an outsider and making meaningful friendships. Story 11. About a decade and a half ago, I went to visit my then-boyfriend in Japan where he was teaching English as part of the Japan Exchange and Teaching Program. He met me at Narita Airport and we took a train to Tokyo. I had a moment of alarm when I saw that a lot of people were wearing masks, thinking there was an endemic illness spreading in Japan. My boyfriend hadn't told me that masking up to go out in public was the norm if you were concerned about getting sick, or if you were feeling poorly and didn't want to get others sick. Story 12. Indian here moved to the United Kingdom for university. And we have this tradition back home where we cut our birthday cake and feed a slice to loved ones. I was celebrating my birthday with friends from all over the world. And my friends looked genuinely confused about why I was trying to offer them a slice of my birthday cake. The following few years, I cut my cake and stood awkwardly after making a slit in the cake, waiting for people to finish singing. Story 13. Japan. Getting on the bus at the back and paying the fare as you get off. Leaving your suitcases at the busiest train station to get something in the convenience store, and nobody touches them, including security. People reading adult comics on public transportation without a fuss. When the line at the convenience store reaches three people, another employee comes to open a new register. There's a lot more. Story 14. Taking a domestic flight in New Zealand, I noticed that when I went to the gate to board my plane, we didn't go through any security. It was shocking to me that New Zealand has some domestic flights with no security screening. Story 15. Visiting Amsterdam, we would be at a ticket counter, and the person behind would always speak English without us uttering a word. What was interesting on the trams is that the announcement system would be in Dutch, but it would always say, remember to check out, in English. Story 16. China, toddlers peeing freely on the street and it evaporating quickly because of the heat. It was very strange. Also China, bluntly taking pictures of people without asking, even posing with them, just because they look unique to them. Story 17. I don't know if this counts as abroad, but I was born and raised in Hawaii. The first other state I ever visited was Texas. And after we landed, 
we had to drive three hours to our destination. We stopped at a Bucky's, and that amazed me. It wasn't the huge jerky bar, the fresh brisket sandwiches, or the fact that you could buy basically anything at this gas station. It was the fact that those bathrooms were the cleanest I've ever seen in my life. We have lots of homeless people and hippies in Hawaii, so anywhere with a public bathroom is just disgusting here. Story 18. Mobile Banking in Africa Most people do not have bank accounts, so a debit or credit card is useless in most cases, except for the big companies that focus on an international audience. You use money transfer services to pay, and it is all stored on your phone. You pay by scanning a quick response code of the business from which you buy something. If you need physical cash, you go to a business that has a sign of the service you are using and just transfer the amount of cash you want, or you look for an agent of your service that has a booth on the street. It's a great system, though. I really like it. Story 19. How differently personal space is defined. In America, it is easily the span of your arms. In Germany, it is the distance of your breath. In England, it is how far you can dissociate. Story 20. On the Galapagos Islands, they are very sparsely populated, and, at least on the island I was on, Santa Cruz, most of the population is in one main city. The really nice thing is that this makes it incredibly safe, so no one ever locked their bike because there was basically zero bike theft. Even if someone did steal it, where would they take it? I suppose all small, isolated cities must be like that, but that was my first time seeing it, and it was very refreshing as someone who has lived in or around major cities their whole life. I did get chased by a sea lion, though. Story 21. Elderly people working in the United States. I was in New York and was served by a waitress who looked in her 80s. You don't see that in Spain. Also, a blind man begging in the subway. Here, blind people have a powerful organization known as the National Organization of Spanish Blind People. And, at a minimum, they can work selling the lottery that funds it. I had never seen a blind or disabled person begging before. Story 22. How shockingly inefficient the work practices of the Japanese are. All my life, I grew up being informed about how efficient they were, but it's shocking to see how something simple like changing currency becomes like something out of a Monty Python sketch. And don't get me wrong, they are very nice to tourists. Story 23. Cuba. People don't form a sequential line for things. At a bus stop, for example, whoever arrives asks, who's the last one? The new person will only get on the bus after the person who responded does. It works perfectly. Story 24. Many countries, particularly in Asia, have a far smaller personal comfort space than the United States. Strangers think nothing of standing close enough to you that they're touching you. Story 25. As an American who loves my personal space, the kissing in Belgium surprised me. I met a very cute girl, and she just went in for a kiss. I was like, whoa, but admittedly, I did like it as I got used to it. Story 26. In Scotland, some members of our tour group, fellow Americans, were upset that there were no washcloths in the hotel bathrooms. The tour director explained that they were considered personal, like a toothbrush. Story 27. So I had just spent the previous 14 months or so in Australia and went to Japan for three months before returning to Australia. That return to Australia, Sydney specifically, was hard. Everything was loud, obnoxious, and dirty compared to that time in Japan. Took a week or so to adjust, but I really disliked Sydney that first week or so. Story 28. My Japanese roommate, when I studied abroad, could not conceive of me wanting to buy multiple days' worth of groceries in one trip. I tried, in my best Japanese, to explain that I also needed lunch for the next few days and not just ingredients for dinner, but no dice. The American in me was used to a large weekly trip in my car, but the Japanese in them was used to a stay-at-home mom making multiple weekly trips on their bike. We never got this resolved. Story 29, Israel. Sitting in McDonald's surrounded by people my age, 18 at the time, in army and navy outfits with their guns resting on the table as they ate their burgers and fries, laughing and joking with each other like they didn't have guns on the table half the size of their bodies. Story 30. In Italy, they don't just give you water with meals, you have to ask, and even then, a lot of the time, they charge you for it. In fact, sometimes if you ask for a glass of tap water, the waiters will straight up just tell you no. I actually learned while I was there that some places may find it rude to ask for tap water, as by default, they serve mineral or sparkling water. 
However, it is still not free in most instances. Story 31. It was many moons ago, but when I was in Italy, they had squat toilets. I was terrified of peeing on my pants, so I would go full Winnie the Pooh each time. I am now a champion at using toilets anywhere, proud to say. But at the time, I was miserable. Story 32. We went to Ireland for a vacation. We rented a car, and not 30 minutes later, my dad scraped another car trying to parallel park it. We asked someone walking down the street if they knew who owned it. Nope. Do we call the police? No. Maybe just ask around. And that guy wandered off. We went into the business it was parked in front of. No one there knew who owned it either. We left our contact information with a small note saying we'd pay for repairs. We never heard back. It was so radically different, and the fact that no one seemed to care at all about it was so odd to us.